My name is Rick Renner, and I'm in the upper room in the wonderful city of Jerusalem. People love this upper room. They visit it from all over the world. In fact, while I've been here today, I've seen so many believers. I've even seen one man laying hands on a group of people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they spoke with other tongues. And I like that because this is also the room where Pentecost took place. The Holy Spirit has been being outpoured here for 2,000 years. But Jesus also served communion here, and he said to the disciples, do this in remembrance of me. And from that moment forward, believers have been practicing communion. We read about it as early as Acts chapter 2, where the Bible says the believers regularly met together and broke bread from house to house. I'm sure they were enjoying dinner together, but in addition to that, they were celebrating communion. We know from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that the Apostle Paul instructed the Corinthian church. They were to practice communion. Communion was to become a major event of the church. And during the act of communion, we are supposed to experience the presence of God. It's more than bread and juice. When we partake of communion, God wants to reveal himself to you and me to bring forgiveness, to bring healing. Wow, communion is so powerful. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Thank you for joining us for the program today. Today, I'm here with Sister Denise Renner. Hey, sweetheart. Hi, Rick. Denise, today's the day. We're going to have communion together. Rick, I already feel his presence. You know, we've been saying all week that we're going to have communion on Friday. Well, this is Friday. And Denise and I have our bread already prepared. We hope that you have your bread prepared. We already have our cup filled with juice. And today we want to share this time with you. But before we do, I want to tell you that if you need prayer, we're here for you. Please call us. The number's on the screen. Or send us an email as soon as we hear from you. We will begin to pray for you. Friends, we know what it means to need prayer. We often need prayer. We have a circle of friends that we call when we feel a need for prayer, and we know they'll really pray for us. So when we tell you to call us or write us and we'll pray for you, we really know what that means when you call or when you write. And I promise you, we'll really pray. If you call, you will meet the most wonderful voice on the other end of the line who will put their faith together with you. Or when your email shows up in our inbox. We'll begin to pray with you. We sincerely mean this. Please let us know how we can pray with you. And we're offering you the series right now, which is called Insights on Communion. It's five parts. It comes in multiple formats with a great study guide. And today is the last day we're offering you Denise's little book called Redeemed from Shame. This is a book that can set you free. If you've dealt with any issues of shame, this is the book you've been looking for. And because it's little, it means you can read it in one setting. By the time you come to the last page, you're going to be shouting because you realize you've been redeemed from shame. But today we're going to talk to you about the supernatural element in communion. Now, in yesterday's program, we talked about what it meant to be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord, what it meant to partake of communion unworthily. And we saw that Paul taught in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that many of the Corinthians were sick, many of them were weak, and some of them had even died because they had partaken of communion in a wrong way. Well, that's interesting because they were all going to church. They were all church people. These were people going to church. But if you study 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and the whole book of 1 Corinthians, even though they were going to church, the Corinthians had a lot of strife. They had a lot of mud slinging. They were fighting with each other. The Bible says they were even suing each other. They were taking each other to court. They were not behaving like people of covenant. Rather than walk in forgiveness, rather than walk in commitment with one another, rather than demonstrate the love of Jesus, they're fighting, mud slinging, strife, taking each other to court, and then they come to church and pick up the bread and drink of the cup and act like they're in covenant, they had no right to that table. They had no right to that table because in life they were demonstrating they were not people of covenant. And as a result, 
a verdict was released against them. God didn't release the verdict. They just broke a spiritual law. God didn't have to do this. If you break spiritual laws, you will reap the ramifications of that. Many of them were sick. Many of them were weak. Some of them had even died because they partook of this table wrongly. Denise and I were just talking before the program today about people who come to church in adultery, in sin, and they partake of this bread and drink of this cup, not even thinking about the consequences of what they're doing. We need to understand this is very serious. And many times... People who partake of communion freely and wrongly, they really shouldn't partake of it. They reap bad consequences. But now here's the thing. If you're in right relationship with God, and if you're walking in covenant with others, as God has commanded you to do, this bread is healing. This bread is wholeness. This bread is provision. This cup is forgiveness. This cup is restoration. All the blessings of God are here. But in every covenant, there were blessings and there were curses. If you were in covenant, if you were living up to the terms of the covenant, you got all the blessings. And God wants us to examine our hearts and then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. We shouldn't be afraid to partake of communion. We just need to make sure everything's right before we put that bread in our mouth and before we put that juice to our lips. It's very important. Isn't that right, Denise? Oh, it's exactly right. When we were talking on the the last program and Rick and I were talking, I thought people who committing adultery, stealing from one another, lying to one another, breaking covenant with one another and acting like they're in covenant and taking this communion and acting like they're in covenant. That is just, I mean, to me, it's scary. It's dangerous because the word of God says some of you are sick and even some of you have even died. God's serious about his word. And Rick, when you were saying that, I thought, Lord, you're serious about your word because, you know, I was raised in church all my life. So it was just like kind of a religious thing that we did and we didn't know what we were doing and we didn't even understand the, what would happen if we took communion and didn't have covenant with one another or were sinning against one another or had bitterness with one another. But as Rick said, there, there, there is the curse, but there is the great blessing and the blessing is greater. And you know, if you have made a mistake in your relationships or if you've not been faithful in your relationship with God, you're still a child of God. Of course you are. You're a child of God. God doesn't want you to run from this table. He just wants you to get your heart right, and then the door is wide open. Yeah. God says, come, eat of this bread, drink of this cup. Right. Just get your heart right, and when you come, He'll heal you. He'll restore you. That power of God will flow into your life. There is power in communion. It will belong to you. The Bible just says, examine yourself, make sure everything is right, and then come, eat of the bread, and drink of the cup. But today we're going to see the supernatural power of God, the supernatural element in communion. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And we're going to begin in a strange verse, verse 14. Paul here is going to describe communion. But he begins by addressing the subject of idolatry. Now that is very strange. Why? Well, let's look at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14. He says, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. The word flee is a Greek word, which means take flight, run as fast as you can, move your feet as fast as possible. It pictures one's feet flying as he flees from a situation. Paul understood that idolatry and places of idolatry were filled with demon spirits. Now, when you study the New Testament, Paul says over and over and over, the idol is nothing. It's just a piece of stone. It's just a piece of carved wood. That's all that it is. But in the environment of idolatry, where sacrifices were being offered to idols, demon spirits were there. They permeated that environment. And many times, believers in the first century were going into the temples because that's where the best meat was sold. So there was a big issue about whether or not you should eat meat offered to idols. The issue was not the meat. Meat cannot be demon-possessed. The problem was where you had to go to buy the meat. 
you had to go into the pagan temples or near them to buy the really high quality meat. And many believers were walking into those environments that were filled with demon spirits in order to buy good quality meat, and they were walking out oppressed. And Paul says, hey, the meat is not that important. Buy your meat somewhere else or don't eat meat at all. Being oppressed is a very high price to pay for finding a good quality of beef. Paul says, just avoid the meat altogether. If that's where you have to go to buy the meat, then don't go there. Don't eat the meat. Meat cannot be demon-possessed, my friends. It's just meat. But there are some environments that are unhealthy to be in because the environment is permeated with a negative spiritual influence. Well, if you walked into a pagan temple, you're walking into a facility that is loaded with demon spirits. And that's why Paul said, flee from it. Get away from there. This is what they had been delivered from. They didn't need to walk back in there. They had been delivered from that. Now, keep all that in mind. And now go to verse 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. Paul says, the cup of blessing which we bless. He's talking about communion. He's talking about a cup just like this. You know what that word cup of blessing is? It's where we get the word Eucharist. It's a compound of two Greek words. The word you means something swell, something wonderful. It's compounded together with the word logos, which is the Greek word for low, for words. When you compound the two words together, it forms the Greek word Eucharist. That's where we get the word for the Eucharist, communion. It means wonderful words. The things we say about this cup, this is a cup of blessing. We could say endless words about this cup. This cup represents the blood of Jesus, forgiveness, deliverance, wholeness. It is the cup of blessing. In fact, Paul says the cup of blessing which we bless, the Greek really means for which we have endless good words to speak about. Wow, thank God for the cup of blessing. But he says, is it not the communion of the body of Christ, the bread which we break? Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Well, that word communion in this text is very, very important. Don't just gloss over that word. Dig deep. It is the word koinonia. It comes from the word koinos. Now listen careful. The word koinos refers to things that are common or mutually shared, such as property that jointly belongs to two or more people. It carries the idea of commonality or connectedness that is intrinsic to this word koinonia. When koinos becomes the word koinonia, it conveys the idea of engagement, engagement, involvement, fellowship, or real, actual participation, which means the verse tells us, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? There is real engagement with the blood of Christ. There's an actual participation with the blood of Christ. The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? That word communion, the Greek word koinonia, there's real engagement with the body of Jesus. Then he says in verse 17, For we, being many, are one bread and one body, for we all partakers of that one bread. The word partakers is the Greek word medeko, which means to actively partake, which means faith has to be involved for you to experience the benefits of communion. You have to actively partake. You have to actively say, I'm taking the blood of Christ. I'm taking the body of Christ. You've got to put your faith out there. You've got to become a partaker of these things. Mm -hmm. Then Paul says in verse 18, Behold Israel after the flesh. Are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? Who's he talking about in that verse? He's talking about Israel. And he's talking about the priests who served in the temple. And the priests who served in the temple lived at the altar. They ate of the altar. They were partakers of the altar. The glory of God was there. The presence of God was there. And by living at the altar and eating of the altar and serving at the altar, they were constantly permeated by the presence of God that was in the altar. They were hanging out near the presence of God. They were partakers of the altar and the presence of of God that was in that altar. Now that was true of Israel. Mm. But he's speaking to Corinthians who are pagans, so now he's going to give them a pagan illustration. So now he says in verse 19, 
What I say then, that the idol is anything? Now he's talking about paganism. Or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? He's really diminishing the power of an idol. An idol is nothing. What's offered to an idol is nothing. It's not even important. But then he explains in verse 20. But I say that the things with the Gentiles sacrifice, which the pagans sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. You see, behind the statue, behind the idol, there was a spiritual presence. And Paul says, you need to understand what the presence is in a pagan temple. It's devils. This word devils, the Greek word daimonion, it means evil spirits, demons, devils. Paul says devils are in that place. And he says that the things with the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Should have in Greek is the word genomai. It describes something that comes to pass over a period of time. He says, I don't want you to progressively become influenced or to have fellowship with devils. That word fellowship again is a Greek word koinonia. Paul literally says, I don't want you to become engaged with demons. Now I'm going to read to you from my notes. Paul uses these words to relate that when people went into those pagan temples to offer pagan sacrifices, they put themselves in a bad spiritual environment where demons were permeating the environment and they placed themselves in jeopardy of becoming engaged with demons. Paul declared that a person's physical presence in the proximity of idol worship potentially put him in a position to come under the influence of the demonic realm. For some people, it could have happened very quickly. For others people, it would have taken place over a period of time. That's why the word genomai is used to progressively become engaged with. There was a potential spiritual damage and great potential harm that people could have subjected themselves to by simply being in that bad Place. They could have entered into fellowship, engagement, participation with demons, walked in there free, and walked out oppressed. Paul says, hey, the meat is not worth it. That was the issue of meat, sacrifice to idols. I would translate it like this, and I would not, that you should have participation with devils as a result of being in the atmosphere of idolatrous sacrifices and activities. But then look at verse 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partaker of the Lord's table and the table of demons. Paul says you have to make your choice. You're going to live for God or you're not going to live for God. You can't have both. You can't have both. And notice that he says, you cannot be partakers of the Lord's table. Partakers, again, the Greek word which means to actively partake, which means for you to get the benefit of the Lord's table. You have to put your faith out there. You have to say, I'm going to receive my healing. I'm going to receive my wholeness. You've got to put your faith out there. But the word table, the Greek word trapeza, huh, this is so powerful. It is the same word for a table, a banqueting table, and it is identically the same word for a bank, which means just like a bank is loaded with money and you can make withdrawals, communion is loaded with God's goodness. Communion is loaded with healing. It's loaded with deliverance. It's loaded with forgiveness. Communion is a bank. It is loaded with everything that you need. If you've got your heart right, you have access to this bank, to this table. And if you'll use your faith, you can partake of it. You can make a withdrawal when you partake of communion. Mm. Isn't that powerful? powerful? This is God's bank. Yes. Healing is in this bread. Yes. Wholeness is in this bread. Blessing deliverance, forgiveness. It's all here. It is the Lord's table. It's his bank. But Paul says, mm. you can't do both. <clears throat> if you're going to be in covenant, you have to be in covenant. You can't be in covenant with God and covenant with the world. You can't eat of the Lord's table and eat of the table of demons. You just can't do both. But here's the thing that I want you to see. Just like when you would come to a pagan temple it was permeated with demon spirits and you could be influenced. Paul is teaching us that when you come to the table of communion, the presence of God is here. The presence of God permeates communion. And when you come to the communion table, there is a supernatural element that is there. It is God's bank. It is loaded. And God wants you to make a withdrawal for anything that you need. And then he says in verse 22, do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Wow, 
we need to understand communion is serious with God. But this is God's table and the presence of God is in communion. And there is an engagement with the body of Christ. There's an engagement with the blood of Jesus if you'll use your faith. You have to use your faith for this to happen. But in this table, there's healing in the bread. God's provision is in the bread. There's forgiveness, there's deliverance. Everything we need is in the cup. It's all right here. It is the cup of blessing which we bless. The Greek word eulogia, there's not enough words to describe. How wonderful is this cup? And it's yours and it's ours. And Jesus says, get your heart right, make sure everything's fine. Then come to the table, come to the bank and make your withdrawal. If you need healing, take healing. If you need deliverance, take deliverance. Whatever you need, make your withdrawal from this heavenly bank. It's ours. It's yours. And right now we're going to partake. So I want you to reach for your piece of bread. Denise, here's a piece of bread for you. If you have your elements prepared, let's go to the bank today. Let's go to the table of the Lord. What do you need? Do you need healing? Jesus gave his body for your healing. When he gave that bread, he said, everything I have, it's at your disposal. All the promises of God, it's all at your disposal. Draw that heavenly bank right now. Let's partake. Father, we thank you for the broken body of Jesus. We thank you for the covenant that you made with us. And Lord, today with thankful hearts, Denise and I and our friends, we come to your table. We come to your bank. We withdraw the healing that we need the wholeness that we need, the provision that we need, all the covenant promises you made to us, we make that withdrawal right now as we partake of this bread. Afterwards, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the new covenant, new covenant in blood. I'm going to back this up with blood. Jesus said, drink this as often as you must. My friend, give your life, recommit your life over and over and over as often as you must to stay in that high-level covenant position God wants you to walk in. Denise, would you partake of that first and then hand me the cup? Take your cup and drink with us right now. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's just thank him. Lord, we thank you for this cup of blessing. We thank you for everything you've committed to us. We thank you that you've invited us into covenant with you. You have brothered with us through the blood of Jesus. We thank you for it. In Jesus' powerful name and by faith, we partake in the body and in the blood of Jesus. And we withdraw everything we need for our lives. In Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Amen. Wow, this has been so great today. We'll be back in just a moment, and we're going to pray for you. Many churches have communion once every quarter of the year. But what is it really all about? In Insights on Communion, Rick Renner delves into what communion meant in the ancient world and why Jesus commanded all Christians practice it. People all over the world and in every Christian denomination often take communion without really understanding what it means. In this five-part series, you'll learn what communion meant in the first century, what the symbolism of the bread and juice means, what the disciples understood when Jesus served them communion, what the spiritual and physical benefits of communion are for you today. Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10, Insights on Communion will teach you the significance of communion and how to activate its power in your life every time you take it. In addition to this teaching series, you can also purchase the book, Redeemed from Shame. If you've dealt with issues of shame, it's time for you to walk free of it forever. In this book by Denise Renner, you'll learn that Jesus took your shame on the cross and you don't need to live with it anymore. If you want to walk free from the prison of shame that you've been in for so long, the answer is waiting for you and redeemed from shame. This powerful book can be yours for just $7. Order today to discover how to have the victory that Jesus wants to give you over your past and over the shadow of shame that has tried to hover over your life. Don't miss this special offer, Insights on Communion and Redeem from Shame. Call now, 1-800-742-5593 or go to renner.org. Call or go online now. 
My name is Joel Renner, coming to you from Moscow, Russia. And I want to say thank you for being a partner with our ministry. It's because of your financial support that we're able to open churches all over our city. Moscow is a beautiful city and one of the oldest cities in Russia. It is very dynamic and is a very large city that is developing all the time. There are many churches in Moscow, but ours is one of the biggest Protestant churches in the city and was opened in the year 2000. And it is called the Moscow Good News Church. But more recently, we opened a new church location in the southwest region of Moscow. Because of this new location, our Moscow Goodness Church can serve people who live on the other side of our city. People there need salvation, healing, restoration, and a place they can call their spiritual home. And the Lord has called us to take the gospel to them. Our partners helped us lay the foundation of the Moscow Goodness Church and have helped us open multiple churches in Moscow but we've been working quite some time to open this new location and now it's done. We thank God for His help and rejoice at everything the Lord has done and is doing in our lives. Because of the support of our generous partners, we are able to open these new locations in our great city. We all have a part to play and right now, right from your home, you can help us help others by becoming a partner in this work and supporting our work financially. We invite you to become a partner with us to establish believers in the Word of God and take the gospel all over our city. Please call us or go online to renner.org. Through your generous support, we can continue to make a huge difference in people's lives and around the world. Well, today we have completed our teaching on communion. Denise, it's been something else. Oh, it's been powerful. And today we went to the bank and we made our withdrawal. Healing, wholeness, forgiveness, deliverance, all of that is in communion and Jesus has come. This is my body broken for you. This is my blood shed for you. And he invites us to come with right hearts to make our withdrawals of whatever we need in our life. That's what communion is. It's a place where you use your faith to partake and to withdraw what you need. There's a supernatural element in communion. Wow, it's just so powerful. Hey, but we're offering you the series, which is called Insights on Communion. It's five parts comes in multiple formats. We want you to order your copy today. And of course, it comes with a study guide. You'll love the study guide. The two of these together are just dynamite. And today is the last day that we're offering Denise's book, which is called Redeemed from Shame. This book is powerful. By the time you come to the last page of this book, you're going to be shouting hallelujah because you're going to realize you've been redeemed from shame. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's for somebody you know, but you know somebody that's dealing with shame. Get them this book. Order it today. Call us right now. Let us know how we can pray for you. And if you want to order one of these products, we'll get it right in the mail to you. But Father, we're so grateful that this week we've been able to sit around the table and talk about the wonderful subject of communion. Oh, we say thank you. Thank you for the cup of blessing. We thank you for our healing. We thank you for our deliverance. We thank you for you cutting a covenant on the cross for every one of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for being with us today. Remember Ecclesiastes 8.4. It says, where the word of a king is, there's power. That's the truth. Let God's word work in you today. And I'll see you in the next program.